Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my great privilege to address all the audience uh, in the TV studio of Univer TV channel of the Kazan Federal University. And today we have a very distinguished guest that came to Kazan for the fourth International Forum for Teacher Education. And uh, having such a very distinguished and esteemed panel, uh, after these three days of the forum that has been here in Kazan so far, uh, there are quite interesting questions that uh, we would like to discuss today. And I guess we'll have the following format. Uh, each of you will just have a small introduction. And um, the question I would like to put on the panel is about what are the basic and major challenges that the system of education both the teacher training uh, system and the uh, overall education system are facing nowadays. Um, and that will be like the first question. And the second, like your overall impression in terms how do you feel uh, about the forum and how it goes? Because I know that for some of you, it's not just the first time you come to Kazan and participate in this, in this event. As it's expanding its geography, its influence and uh, representation and I hope influence. So, and it's my first, uh, it's my privilege to give the floor to a uh, professor of uh, University of Oxford, uh, Mr. Jan Mentor. So, would you say a few words, please? Yes, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here again. In fact, this is my fourth visit to Kazan, and I have been at three of the uh, International Forum on Teacher Education. It's a very exciting event. It has grown enormously since it started four years ago and this year we are joined by many scholars from right across Russia and indeed from the wider world and it's been a really invigorating three or four days and I'd love to talk about some of the problems we've discussing but I think I'll let my colleagues introduce themselves first. Okay, thank you. So probably we'll just go uh, counterclockwise. Okay. And Moira, I'll um, give the floor to you, please. Hello, my name is Moira Boland. I uh, work at the University of Glasgow in the School of Education. Uh, this is my second time in Kazan, but my first time at the, the Forum for Teacher Education. Um, it's delightful to be here. Uh, Glasgow University has a really strong partnership with the Federal University of Kazan and that's really focused in your School of Education uh, and Psychology. And it's been almost like coming to a family um, where teacher educators have had an opportunity to speak to each other and to think and to share best practice and so it's been an amazing event which ha has allowed us as professionals to reflect on the work that we are doing but also to ultimately think how do we best educate teachers to meet the challenges that I think many countries face across the globe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm Professor Gil Noam. I am from Harvard University and I direct a program called the PEAR Institute, Partnerships in Education and Resiliency. And I, for me it's the first time. I felt very excited when I got invited because mm -hmm. I have not been to Russia. I know a lot about Russia and Russian culture, but to actually be here and to you know, feel the welcome and the generosity of the hosts and all the people that we spoke with and spoke to was just very exciting. And I hope I can in four years also say it's my fourth time. So. Thank you. And I'm Marjorie McMahon from the University of Glasgow. And this is my fourth visit to Kazan. I've attended three forum previously uh, and also been involved in a CPD workshop at the university. And like Ian, I have been really quite uh, impressed at the way the conference has grown, the way that it has re really put a regional stamp on teacher education um, and reached out to the, to the, the other republics and, and across the Russian Federation. So actually it's quite a diverse conference. And I think what's quite significant is how it has grown strategically. So a, a great uh, honour and privilege this time to see uh, organisations such as ISAT, the International Study Association for Teachers and Teacher Education, and ATE, the, the Association of Teacher Educators in Europe, 
both groups participating in this conference. And again, I think that's a measure of the, the, the significance and the strategic direction that Kazan Federal University has taken to become a leader in teacher education in Europe. Mm, thank you. Hi, um, I'm Connor Galvin. I'm in mm. University College Dublin in what we call the College of Social Sciences and Law, but effectively I work in the School of Education. So like a number of colleagues, it's my fourth visit. Um, I've also participated in three fora, but I came here originally for swimming, <laughs> which is one of life's little mysteries, but uh, that's what brought me to Kazan originally. Mm -hmm. um, my, my first experience of Kazan was in relation to it being one of the foremost capital con in, in terms of sports and activities of that type. Um, so the forum and the invitation to participate came mm -hmm. afterwards. Uh, I, I, I just briefly echo what's been said so far. It has been an incredible journey. We've seen so much changing in the three to four years. Um, but there's a lovely sense of direction about it all. Um, it's growing slowly, it's growing systematically, and I, I think it's starting to be felt way beyond the bounds of Russia and mm -hmm. we're seeing people talking about the forum now in places that they might not previously and that's mm -hmm. very good news. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, my name is Maria Teresa Tato. I'm a, a professor, uh, the Southwest Borderlands Professor of Comparative Education mm -hmm. at Arizona State University. Um, this is the second time I'm here. I skipped one year last, last year, and I was very sad I couldn't come. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here this year. But I should say that um, um, the, the Kazan University influence uh, extends beyond the forum. Uh, Rosa and others are, col and us are collaborating with the World Education Research Association, an international research network, doing research on teacher education, as well as participating together in a, in a, uh, a study of teacher education in mathematics, uh, which is a, a collaborative project of several, um, you know, several universities. And so Kazan is an important representative of the Russian culture, uh, Russian teacher education. And uh, it's just an honor to be here with, with friends. Uh, and I agree, it's uh, like coming to back to family. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a very lovely contribution you made about uh, your experience and what you witnessed in Kazan. And from what you have just said, I can see that Kazan is growing in the terms of teacher education and teacher education science and how it is developing not only in terms of sports, being the sports capital of Russia, as it is recognized, but uh, gaining momentum and bringing new members and new associations and I think it's uh, very gratifying for me as a Kazan citizen to see what success it is achieving. Uh, but still, um, it's all good about dealing and addressing those issues. But most importantly, uh, because the major mission of the forum to address those challenges that are shared, because there are some things in accordance with a drastically changing world uh, that not only Russia but the whole world and countries you are representing has to deal with. And it is very important and it will be very nice for our audience to know what are the recommendations and what is your standpoint on uh, how can we deal with the challenges and what are the challenges mm -hmm. you would name. And so it's like the very informal and open discussion, so you just take the mic and go ahead. Could I start? Yes, please. I mean, yeah. Yesterday morning I was talking about how teacher education is developing around the whole world. Mm -hmm and how there is a kind of global movement to recognize that the quality of teaching is so important in the quality of education that children in schools, young people, receive. And that's why teacher education has been focused on so much, so increasingly in recent years. It's become a real issue for most countries in the world. It's not just in Russia, but we see many things happening in other countries as well. And the kinds of problems that are being addressed 
in many countries, including here in Russia and led by from Kazan Federal University, are things like the integration of the theory of education and the practice of education. Mm -hmm. Things like the way in which universities and schools work together mm -hmm. to improve the quality of the learning experience for beginning teachers. Mm -hmm. These are some of the key issues that we're facing today. And one more, just to get us going, is the relationship between educational research mm -hmm and the formation of policy and practice in teacher education. These, I think you would agree, are some of the issues that we've been talking about for the last three days. They're issues internationally, but they have a particular focus here in this conference to try and bring about positive change in Kazan and across the wider federation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And just to, mm -hmm. to pick up on what Ian has said, one of the things that has struck me about this year's conference is that the focus has moved beyond the initial preparation of mm -hmm. teachers to that yes. wider question of teacher professionalism and career-long professional learning. Because as, as Ian has, uh, has mentioned, um, the, f the focus on teacher quality is about teacher quality over the lifetime of a teacher, their career in teaching. So what can we do to support teachers as they become more established in the profession, as they become more expert, and what we can do to, to begin to share their practice across, uh, the, across the profession and with other teachers. So it's been quite interesting as, as a result of some of the discussions at the conference to hear from colleagues from, say, uh, Italy and Malta mm -hmm. about the initiatives that they've been taking to uh, develop research studies uh, for career-long professional learning for teachers and, and the, the issues and the challenges that they've experienced. But one big message is that it needs to be systemic, it needs to be mm -hmm. across the system mm -hmm. and it needs to be strategic and, and not opportunistic. Mm -hmm. So some really important learning happening at this conference from colleagues both within Russia but also beyond Russia. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think w yeah, within the conference what it allowed us to do to discuss and to think about the research and about practice and to look through a lens into the classroom to see the child and the complex world that the child lives in and the complexities of that world and the challenges that our children face then look for a teacher who is highly skilled in an exceptionally complex mm -hmm environment of the classroom and able to take what Ian was suggesting around the research and the theory to be able to better support children to achieve their potential and I think to have an international forum where you can hear perspectives across the world and how teachers are educated in that exceptionally complex task mm -hmm. of becoming a teacher and then, as Marjorie is suggesting, sustaining and developing as a teacher throughout your career mm -hmm. has, has been very, very fruitful, I think, for, for myself as a professional. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first day of the conference, I was very pleased to, uh, well, very honoured to present uh, on the knowledge that teachers have as concerns uh, mathematics. Um, and uh, this, this, I think, is an interesting and very special part of what the forum is helping us do, which is actually thinking about the teacher as a learner. Not only you know, the learners in the classroom, but also how the teacher learns to teach challenging, difficult subjects. And uh, the, the forum taking this seriously, I think, is really important. We had very, very good conversations on that first day around how teachers learn to teach these subjects, but also the idea of learning to teach to the to diverse students, what we call diverse students in the mm -hmm. US, students who have a range of difficulties, which is a theme that actually the forum has followed up to today. We just had a really interesting conversation about you know, how teachers are prepared to teach students mm -hmm. who may be going through really serious and traumatic events. So taking very seriously that work of the teacher and then the knowledge that teachers need to have in order to be able to be effective, especially effective for students who may not have all the resource, but the resource of that teacher. Yeah, thank you, absolutely. Mm, and uh, just it's if very... I could, just yeah, before yes, we please. leave this, um, I, I would agree absolutely about that. But there's one, there's one feature of the conference that always strikes me as really interesting, and it was particularly evident this year. Um, it's not often that you get policymakers and teacher educators mm -hmm. in the same space. Mm -hmm. It's quite a difficult match to, to, to actually make. 
because we tend to go to different conferences, we tend to have different time scales uh, in terms of our professional lives and so on. So the opportunity to actually engage with policymakers, people who are involved at a very deep level in terms of determining future policy in relation to Russia, particularly the Federation, um, is quite interesting and quite challenging. And to see the Deputy Minister turning up yesterday. Now, I'm not a person, as I said in my talk earlier today, I'm not a person who really has much time for politicians mm. normally. But I have to say I was very, very impressed. Because this woman came to the conference, she stood at a podium and she spoke for 20 minutes with no notes. She absolutely spoke freely with, without any notes. So she was clearly someone who has thought very deeply about this whole work uh, and, and sees it as important. Um, and I think that's very heartening. So to, to, to have the opportunity to engage with policymakers and to see them so open to engaging with teacher educators, mm -hmm. I think is a, a, a very interesting quality of the forum, mm -hmm. just for, for that. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I think, a great advantage, uh, advantage of this conference since we bring together the practitioners, mm -hmm. the researchers, mm -hmm. the regulator represented by the ministries, mm -hmm. and uh, taking this opportunity of being heard by the regulator and bring in on those changes, maybe not only on the level of the region, but on the federal level. And as for the regional representation, uh, we had um, teachers and researchers from different entities in the region of the Russian Federation. And I think uh, it was a great advantage for them to listen to comprehend and to immerse into these discussions because all those roundtable discussions provoked a lot of interests because they are touching most relevant and urgent issues mm -hmm. which need some address and some kind of a solution in the nearest term perspective in this drastically changing world <coughs> when we are on the verge of this um, fourth industrial revolution and the revolution is always ahead as, as one of the pictures show when the education sometimes lag behind the technology and when we have to address this challenge and probably uh, Gil can also somehow comment on this on this topic. Yeah, I, thank you. I, mm -hmm. I, um, I think there are like three different themes that I've heard mm -hmm. here, but I would hope that into the future we will actually focus on them more. One is time, the other one is space, mm -hmm. and the third one is technology or data. And I'm not going to like give a lecture now, so don't worry. Mm -hmm. But time is, I, I think that teachers now have a competitive situation, which I think is very good. They're not the holders of the information anymore by themselves. There's kind of an end of a monopoly. And I think what's happening is that young people, especially when they become adolescents, are picking up their data and their information everywhere. In fact, students in my class, when I give them some facts, they kind of, I can see they're checking, they're checking me <laughs> kind of to make sure that I'm yeah. saying the correct thing. And so that frees up, should free up the teacher, but it also should create a much more flexible situation. And the second one is space. Uh, so the time is that it happens everywhere. The space is that we also have to get away from the idea it's all happening in the classroom. So the teacher is becoming, I think, a choreographer of a lot of resources in the community, museums, and other things where projects become kind of possible. And the third one is probably the most important one, which I think is data or technology, that we have to like, move away from data as punishment or as kind of a way of seeing whether the teachers and the students have done the right thing and have really reached the levels. We still need to have that information. But if we think about teachers as professionals, the data has to be different. It has to be used at all times. It has to be used to personalize the educational experience. We have to know at all times what kids know and how we individualize their learning. And not just an average at the end that says, the teacher has taught to the test well. I, I don't think that's the world that we're going to be in in, in a short while. Yeah, absolutely. And all those topics that, uh, that were covered. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend all the sessions, but uh, at least those sessions that I was privileged to translate, uh, I heard that uh, very important, uh, this ICT thing that is important and uh, is an advantageous tool in promotion, uh, the education and addressing those tasks. And at the same time, it's important to uh, like 
give sufficient amount of attention to all kinds of categories of children. Those who experience some traumas and deprivations, uh, those, uh, the experience and the history of indigenous population, because here we saw and heard people sharing different experiences representing different parts of the world. And, uh, well, it's all mm, so exciting mm -hmm. yeah. to witness. I mean, teaching is a more challenging profession mm -hmm. than it has ever been yeah. before. Yes. And what Gil has just said about data, I take that entirely. But we're still left with the fact that a teacher working with children, whether in a classroom or out in some field experience or online, mm -hmm. the teacher is still making individual decisions about every one of their learners. And they have to be able to be informed so that they make the best boss possible decision yes. Yes. for that. They may be surrounded by data, and the data helps us to evaluate yes. whether they're being effective or not. But the actual responsibility on the teacher, I think, has never been greater. And so the kind of one of the themes that I'd like to point out or draw out from the conference is the reshaping of what we mean by teacher professionalism. You alluded to it, Gil, but I think it's quite a broad question about how the nature of teaching and the responsibilities of teacher, teachers are changing in this, as Moira said earlier, this increasingly complex world that young people are growing into. One, one of the things that reminds me from what you're saying is the emphasis that you made in your presentation about, about the importance of research as part of this uh, definition or redefinition of what a professional teacher uh, <coughs> can be. And uh, some of the projects that were presented here actually are geared to help teachers learn how to do research on their own practice rather than the traditional way in which we tend to collect data from teachers and we just give them averages or we use the data to evaluate them and as punishment. You know, how can we actually develop a collabora collaboration right, between researchers, teacher educators, and teachers, and even students and parents, you know, to help collect information and learn from, from practice and then use that learning to inform this practice. And it's not an easy task. It's quite a, quite a complex thing to do, but teachers should be able to do this, and we should all be on board helping teachers to, to, to learn about how to do research on their practice. And when we say research, it's not the research over there, but you know, how do, we, do they actually learn from assessments, and then how can that help them address the needs of individual students? To me, it's a much more demanding uh, job than it has ever been. And then at the same time, you ask about you know, the big problems in education, mm -hmm. we see that many people are opting not to become teachers. Teacher education programs are receiving less students, maybe not everywhere, but certainly in the US, which is where I work. And so the conditions that Gil allures to when you know, uh, education systems are using data to punish teachers, I think that's having the unintended, or maybe intended consequence, to, to uh, detract people from becoming teachers. And uh, you know, forms like these actually bring back the, the respect for teachers, the respect that we always should have for teachers, and, and, and I think that respect is missing from many societies. I, I think in Russia it's not, and it's something that we should try to, to, to promote. Uh, without teachers, we're gonna be in serious trouble, yeah. right? So. Yeah. yeah, just as our president says, the best investment is investment in people, like uh, rephrasing the famous quote by uh, Sir Francis Bacon. Yeah, the best investment is investment in knowledge. And, uh, well, I think it's absolutely important, and I would say that's our mission supreme, to bring the prestige of that profession to a sufficient and uh, adequate level. Because the teacher, uh, if we refer back to the experience and the history of the Soviet times and even before, it was very much respected person and profession not as much respected as it should be nowadays, but hopefully the situation will be changing, changing gradually, maybe not that drastically as, it, as we might want it to change. Uh, and I think the next forums will address even more important and relevant issues uh, because the world is changing, new uh, problems are coming on stage and we have to deal with that. 
but the prestige of the profession is one of the important things for those people who are freshmen, the sophomores, the senior students, and it's a big thing it should be somehow addressed in the future, and so here we are now. So let me just say something you really quickly, really quickly. Another, okay. another thing that I just want to point out as to what this conference is doing just in an amazing way is to take into account the very young scholars that are attending yes. and providing opportunities for them to learn how to do research, to learn how to publish. There are journals here and journal editors who are talking to these to this, uh, young, young people. Mm -hmm. So definitely the idea of investing in people is very much present in, in the forum. So I mm -hmm. just didn't want to forget that. I'm sorry. No, no, this is good. This is great. Um, I, th I just want to um, really respond to what Ian said that I, I, I think it's, um, it's clear the professionalism of the teacher is critical and, and data can't just be data instead of the teachers. It should be data supporting, like you said, surrounding teachers. But I, I want to just add one thing which is kind of goes beyond the data, which is we are in many cultures and countries kind of leaving a, a more hierarchical traditional path. Mm -hmm. I think that's true for, for many countries that I visit. Uh, the teacher needs respect, but the respect is not going to be the old respect. Mm -hmm. We have to give up on that idea. The respect now is going to be that you have to win your respect from young people. That is really kind of the new, the new way. Young people are just going to shut off or not engage. And the biggest issue in education, I think, one of the biggest issues is how to help teachers and train them to actually engage the young people through productive relationships, through wisdom, through knowledge, through skills. But it has to be earned. And that's, a, that's really a paradigm shift that I see in the, in the US. In many of those environments, the kids are just not coming to school or they're just kind of not listening. They're just doing what they want. Mm -hmm. And that's not true for many Asian countries, so maybe that's going to take longer, but I think it will go in a similar direction, which mm -hmm. is a kind of partnership between the learner and the teacher and the teacher as a learner. Just okay. a point. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what you said about the, the changes in relation to professionalism since the Soviet times, I think it's a very, very interesting one. Um, and I would agree with what you've said, that there has been a shift. And I think it connects to what you've just been actually saying as well. You have to earn respect. Um, you have to earn your, your place. But you also have to have something coming from the societal side. And I think what we are seeing is a return to some of those better values. And it's not a return to the old. It can never be a return to the old. It has to be something new okay. found in the old. And I think that's what we're actually seeing. We're seeing a return to um, some understanding of the teacher as a moral agent, which M mm -hmm. Marjorie talked quite a bit about, as a professional. Mm -hmm. um, now, I would contest slightly what's, what it is to be a professional in terms of some of the ideas that are embedded in contemporary standards and so on. But I think we still have to see teaching as a unique profession, a profession that engages with areas and uh, you know, areas of life that, that no other profession really does. And we are seeing those elements coming through in the forum year after year. Mm -hmm. One topic after another, theme after theme, we're seeing a return to the big issues, the big value questions. Um, um, and, and that's very commendable mm -hmm. because there's no other forum doing it. I think that it's returning to this human interaction yeah. or this human relationship that yeah. teaching has between the child and the teacher. And it's interesting when we, we think about education, uh, we think about the child at the centre, but possibly the forum allows us the opportunity to think of the teacher at the centre mm -hmm. and what is around the teacher to support them to become uh, the best teacher they can be, to achieve their full potential as a teacher. And around them are the policy makers, the research, you know, the, the, the government in terms of how they support. And I think the really important issue is, is the parents and the society, how they support the teacher. And I think that's a question that, yeah. that, that, that needs mm -hmm. a lot more conversation um, around how society and, mm -hmm. and parents support the teacher. I, I just very interestingly once heard a head teacher speak to a group of parents and mm -hmm. say um, that she would never 
expect that she would criticise a parent in front of a child. Mm -hmm. And therefore she would expect the same respect that her parents never criticise a teacher in yeah. front of a child. So and I thought that captured mm -hmm. this notion of respect for the profession. And I think that the forums allowed us to, to, to begin to raise those questions and, and discuss them. So thank you very much for such a mm -hmm. in-depth, not just talk, but I would even say analysis. And as I can get and uh, recapitulating from what I have just in heard and you shared, there are so many things that should be addressed. And I do hope that I'll see you next year at the forum or maybe at some other fields of some other events organized by so many organizations and I would like to once again thank you for such a valuable contribution to our discussion and thank you very much to, for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Indeed. It's a pleasure.